we bring you the voice of Yankee Stadium for over half a century public address announcer Bob Shepard. And now the starting lineup for the Arizona Diamondbacks. First the manager number 15 Bob Brindley. Leading off number four second baseman Craig Council number four batting second number 12 the center fielder Steve Finley batting third number 20 left fielder Luis Gonzalez number 20 batting fourth number 16 the right fielder Reggie Sanders number 16 batting fifth number 44 the designated hitter Arubio Durazo number 44 batting sixth number nine the third baseman Matt Williams number nine Batting seventh, number 17, the first baseman, Mark Grace, number 17. Batting eighth, in the bullpen, number 26, the catcher, Damian Miller, number 26. Batting ninth, number five, the shortstop, Tony Womack, number five. And warming up in the bullpen, the pitcher, number 34, Brian Anderson, number 34. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your 2001 American League champion and three-time defending world champion, New York Yankees. First, the trainers, coaches, and reserves. And now the starting lineup. But first, the manager, number six, Joe Torrey, number six. Leading off, number 11, the designated hitter, Chuck Knobloch. Batting second, Number two, the shortstop, Derek Jeter, number two. Batting third, number 21, the right fielder, Paul O'Neill, number 21. Batting fourth, number 51, the center fielder, Bernie Williams, number 51. Batting fifth, number 24, the first baseman, Gino Martinez, number 24. Batting sixth, in the bullpen, number 20, the catcher, Jorge Posada, number 20. Batting seventh, number 47, the left fielder, Shane Spencer, number 47. Batting eighth, 
Number 18, the third baseman, Scott Grocious. Number 18. Batting ninth, number 33, the second baseman, Alfonso Soriano, number 33. And warming up in the bullpen, the pitcher, number 22, Roger Clemens, number 22. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise? And let us now take a moment in silence to remember the tragic events of September 11th. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention now to the area in front of the pitcher's mound for tonight's ceremonial first pitch. And please welcome the President of the United States. President has ever visited Yankee Stadium during the World Series. This was the year. This was the year for that to happen. you by the people of United Airlines. We are united. We were saying at the end of the ceremonial first pitch that no president had ever come to Yankee Stadium during World Series history. If ever there was a year for that first presidential visit, this is the year. Joe Buck and Tim McCarver with you getting ready for game three. Let's talk about something new. Let's talk pitching. Pitching. Something pitching. new. Right. And we'll talk about the New York Yankees first. Roger Clemens the likely Cy Young Award winner this season in the American League is on the mound tonight for the Yankees down two games to none. And Joe Torre and the Yankees have legitimate concerns about Roger Clemens. He has not started a game in nine days. He hasn't gone seven innings in a start since September 5th. So the problems are twofold. Is his hamstring all right? And if it is, will he be too strong and wild out of the strike zone? Bob Brindley and the Diamondbacks certainly hope so. Fans will get a kick out of meeting a young guy like Brian Anderson. He's a left-hander pitching tonight for the Arizona Diamondbacks and really a perfect situation for him. His team up two games to none. It's a low-pressure start if there is such a thing in the World Series and if there is such a thing here at Yankee Stadium. And the key word there is left-hander. Here at Yankee Stadium, only 314 down the line. That neutralizes the big left-handed bats of the Yankees and he is cool 
calm and collected and that's another reason he's starting here. one thing you should know folks if he is ineffective Miguel Batista is available tonight it is our belief that Kurt Schilling will pitch game four tomorrow night there are veterans for each side they are getting ready for the start of game three welcome back to Yankee Stadium just before the start of game three of this 2001 World Series one Texan on the mound right now for New York one Texan on the mound moments ago for the United States of America. The old Yale right hander brought it home and Bob Brentley had this to say to him after the pitch. Very nice throw Mr. President. Good stuff. Good stuff. A special moment here before the start of game three and now it's Roger Clemens with a postseason record of 0 and 1. Factoring in what he has done even in this postseason, however, the Yankees are 29 and 6 when he starts a game. And a matter, perhaps, of Roger Clemens being too strong. Once again in the opening, it's been nine days since his last start. If he's wild, it'll be high above the letters. A little different look to this Arizona lineup tonight with Council in the leadoff spot. And he's right down the middle, Clemens is, with strike one. Power pitcher who needs that leg drive. So when Roger Clemens has a hamstring problem, it's a bigger problem for him than most pitchers. On 0 and 1, Council takes strike two. Bob Brenly put together five different lineups. His staff got together. This is the lineup they came up with, with Council leading off and Womack batting ninth. The 0 2. Soriano to his right can't make the play, and the Diamondbacks have their leadoff man on. An 0 2 pitch. Soriano got there, couldn't come up with it, and we'll see what they call it a hit or an error. Probably because Soriano had to go so far to his right, even though he should have made the play. Looked like a hit to me because Soriano would have a tough time throwing out counsel had he gloved it cleanly. They're still waiting to rule. And now they're putting up an error. E4 to start the night. And for Soriano, his second error of this postseason. He made 19 during the regular season. The Diamondbacks have not committed an error yet in this World Series as Finley takes a strike. Meanwhile, the Yankees now have committed three. The Yankees have not hit. They have not pitched effectively with the exception being Andy Pettit with his start in game two but even he ended up allowing four runs on five hits. A check on the runner at first and the Diamondbacks will do some running tonight against the combination of Clemens and Posada. During the regular season 40 base runners tried to steal 34 made it so the combination of Posada and Clemens only threw out six council picked off took his lead slipped couldn't get back and that erases the error by Soriano watch council move with his right foot and Craig is hung out to dry slipped a little bit speaking of drying Watch the right foot. Easy play for Tino Martinez. Now an 0 1 pitch. Finley takes the ball outside, 1 and 1. Steve Finley so far, 1 out of 4 in this World Series. In the postseason, however, hitting 351. Trying to get on in front of Gonzalez and against the right hander, Clemens. Bob Brenly has the three left handers at the top of his lineup. Strike two. Two and two. Roger Clements just shook off the splitter or Mr. Splitty as he calls it and went to the low fastball his low fastball to left handed hitters is hittable off the glove of Posada full count 
little different night than we had out in the desert. <laughs> the temperature above 90 during the daylight hours. It's in the low 50s here tonight. Wind whipping around Yankee Stadium. Count stays full on Finley with one out, nobody on. How about the rest of it? 27% is the humidity. You were off. You told me it'd be 28% tonight. The wind's out of the northeast at six miles per hour. Current Phoenix temperature 85 degrees. And the roof is open the here at Yankee is Stadium. Open. Yeah. Three balls, two strikes with one out, nobody on. One on, one out. An error, a walk, and there's Clemens missing high with a 3 2 fastball. Roger Clemens overthrowing the fastball, an eye high heater puts Finley on. So Clemens had Finley in the hole one and two. He walked him, and on an 0 2 pitch, Craig Council hit a ball up the middle, not fielded cleanly, but he did take himself off the hook with the pickoff. So now Luis Gonzalez. Roger Clemens was brought here in 1999 to be the stopper in this rotation. He has never really had to be that stopper like he is asked to be here tonight. Down two games to none in the World Series. In his postseason career, with his team tied or behind in the series, Clemens has made 10 starts, has a 1 and 4 record with an ERA of up near 4.5. However, with his team ahead in the series, which is where he has piled up his two World Series victories, he's 5 and 2 with a 2.61 ERA, and now it's 2 and 0 on Gonzalez. You can see Clemens shaking his head. He is not satisfied right now. And again, it could be the result of not having started in nine days. I think, I, Joe, I think your comparison to David Cohn was appropriate earlier. David Cohn pitching game three of the 1996 World Series. And pitching very well, and here Clemens is in a similar role. After a walk to Finley, Clemens powders a 95 mile per hour fastball by Gonzalez, two and one. When a pitcher is behind, he keeps the ball away from hitters. When he's ahead, he's inclined to come inside. It may be a generality, but more often than not, that's how it works. Clemens steps off and gives a look at Finley over at first base. Finley stole 11 during the regular season, has won this postseason. Do the Diamondbacks run here? Finley stays put. Gonzalez takes ball three, three and one. A lot of times, an early pickoff, early in the game, early in the inning, will deter a team from running. We've talked about this situation often. Three and one the count to a power hitter. This is not a running situation in my view, but a lot of managers send runners. For the first and Finley hops back. Well, Roger Clemens made a start in game one of the division series, got into the fifth inning, allowed two runs on four hits. Game five of the division series, got through four and a third. Game four of the ALCS, he went five. Full count now on Gonzalez. So the offensive count of three and one now has turned into a defensive count of three and two. So expect Finley to run. Clemens struck out 213 during the regular season. He's number three on the all time strikeout list with 3,717. Runner goes. Gonzalez fouls it away. Consistently at 95 with these last three pitches from Roger Clemens. New York Yankees do not expect Luis Gonzalez to hit the ball on the ground the other way. Look at Derek Jeter. Two long strides from second. Finley on that last pitch got a terrific start from first base. Another good start. Gonzalez strikes out. Throw down. Finley gone in the inning over. 
The pitch was up. Posada fired a strike down to second. And the Diamondbacks lose two runners on the base pass in the first inning. Council picked off. Finley thrown out trying to steal. Bottom of the first, no score. So now it's Brian Anderson on the mound tonight for Arizona with the Diamondbacks up two games to none no score into the bottom of the first inning the numbers for Anderson in this postseason he is making his first World Series start but he'll be involved in his fourth World Series game Joe you see a lot of uh, shortstops and middle infielders take the ball in front of the bag and bring it back. But watch after the strikeout strong throw by Posada look at Jeter straddle the bag and make the quick tag to get Steve Finley. So Finley good jump and all thrown out. On a perfect throw and tag. And now it's Knobloch to lead off the bottom of the first inning. And he takes a strike from Brian Anderson. Finley had such a good jump that it took the strong, perfect throw from Posada and the quick tag by Jeter to get him. It's Knobloch, then Jeter, then O'Neill. With Williams, Martinez, Posada in the middle, Spencer, Brocious, and Soriano at the back end of the Yankee lineup. It's 0-2 on Knobloch, who's the DH tonight. Up top at the beginning of this Yankee lineup. Combination has done nothing. Combined 0 for 15. Reached base one time, one run. That was Jeter in the first inning of game one. When he was hit by a pitch. Here's an 0-2 to Knobloch. That's down the right field line, slicing foul. Yankees scored that run and actually took the lead over the Diamondbacks in game one. And since then, they have failed to score in 17 innings. There's some more ugly numbers for the Yankees. They're 1 2 3 batters, 0 for 21. As a group, they're hitting 102. They've had four singles, two doubles. They haven't had a runner past second base. However, you want to divide it up, the Diamondbacks have dominated this series. As Knobloch pops it up behind short, Womack. The Yankee leadoff hitter is gone. Knobloch is now 0 for 9 in this World Series. That'll bring in Derek Jeter, who has gone back to back games in World Series play and gone hitless for the first time in his World Series history. More bad news for the Yankees. Not advanced to runner past second base, as Joe said. No runs scored in the last 17 innings. The longest drop by a Yankees team in a single World Series. And six hits, three in game one, three in game two. And whether it's been Randy Johnson for nine or a combination of Schilling, Morgan, and Swindell, Diamondback pitching has been terrific. Brian Anderson with one out, nobody on. Jeter fouls it off to the right strike one. Jeter. 0 for 7 in the postseason. He had a very good division series against Oakland. ALCS and World Series hitting 083. An on base percentage under 180. And Schilling and Johnson have a lot to do with that. 0 1 pitch. Slicing down the right field line, foul 0 and 2. Up at the top of your screen, the Fox box. Tim, you can. I'll do that. There you go. That's right. where the runners will be on base. Those little boxes will light up. The score, bottom of the first, one out. And in that 0 2 section, you'll see the velocity of the pitch. No balls, two strikes, one out, nobody on. And a foul tip off the mask of the catcher. Damian Miller are off the glove as Jeter just got a piece of it. That's where teams try to pitch Derek Jeter inside, right on the hands. That's where you jam hitters. You don't jam hitters down and in. You do it right at the hands. See that foul tip come down and hit Dale Scott. 
bottom of his left leg. He hunches over, looks out at Anderson. One two pitch. Got him on the inside corner. Good pitch, good start. Two out, nobody on. Brian Anderson has thrown nine pitches and eight strikes. Threads the corner right there. Man. The boss and the boss. A couple of, well, he's one former owner, one current owner. George W. Bush, who pitched at Yale, said he knew his career was over when in a 10 to nothing game he was warming up out of the bullpen and his coach brought in the second baseman to pitch instead of him. He hung it up shortly thereafter. Eventually took over control of the Texas Rangers. Here's an 0 1 to O'Neill. One ball, one strike. President Bush's father, the former President Bush, was a left handed fielding first baseman at Yale. And we'll tell you good glove, not a good bat. Paul O'Neill with his first start of this World Series with two out, nobody on, one ball, one strike. Two and one. In his career against Brian Anderson, four home runs. So O'Neill's nine out of 19. Tino Martinez is five out of 13 with four home runs. Jeter has had success against Anderson in the past, but not in his first at bat, struck out. And now the 2 1 is a strike on the outside corner, 2 and 2 on O'Neill. Paul O'Neill not playing in games one and two. But Brian Anderson is obviously not the type of left hander that pitched against the Yankees in game two. Randy Johnson, not nearly as hard a thrower. The 2 2 pitch. O'Neill flares one into left, might drop. Gonzalez will play it on a hop. And the Yankees have their first hit. It is so frustrating for a pitcher and a catcher when you make the pitch you want to. You can see Damian Miller set up inside. They break O'Neill's bat. And Paul with a dunker into left field. First hit of the ball game. You can see Miller right there. That ball hit it, it would have hit the mid. And O'Neill not fisted it to left. So now it's Bernie Williams, the switch hitting center fielder, who is one out of seven in this World Series. He has the only RBI. That jam shot that was just fair down the left field line in the first inning of game one to score Jeter. That's it. That's it for him. That's it for the Yankees. Strike one on Bernie Williams. And it's probably going to take a hit to move Paul, Paul O'Neill along. Brian Anderson with 40 pickoffs since 1996. The leader in that department, Andy Pettit. Anderson is third. That's slicing down toward the right field corner. It's a foul ball. Foul ball called by the right field umpire, Mark Hirschbeck. Williams will head back to the plate with an 0 2 count. That is a blind spot for us here at Yankee Stadium, but watch both arms go up by Hirschbeck. That ball just foul. Both arms are up. That's a signal for a foul ball. About a foot. So if there are some fans who watch Diamondback games and are maybe watching a game at Yankee Stadium for the first time, we have seen a couple of fly balls head down that right field line and you get a real quick indication as to how little it takes to get the ball out if you can go right down that right field line. 314 feet. The 0 2 pitch one and two. And for your fans out in Phoenix there is no pool here at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> That is where the pool would be right. when they redecorate sometime around here. 
and catch up with the times. I don't think any ballpark should be without a pool. <laughs> when this ballpark was built in 1923, I don't think that was uh, in the minds of the architects. O'Neill is running. Pitch down and away, and O'Neill steals second. The oldest player in the history of Major League Baseball to steal more than 20 and hit more than 20 home runs at the age of 38, bad foot and all, he's at second. We have talked about it uh, during the postseason that players, good base runners, do not lead off the of first base with their hands on their knees. A lot of times, a runner will decoy a pitcher into thinking he's not running. There it is right there. Hands on the knees, and he steals second base. Ryan Anderson took the bait. Now a hit to give the Yankees the lead as that just missed, blowing away. Three balls, two strikes. Williams, during the regular season, drove home 94 runs, hit 26 home runs. He has three postseason home runs this year and 16 in his career. That accomplished accomplishment for Paul O'Neill. He hit 21 home runs and stole 22 bases. 3 2 pitch. That one puts two on for Tino Martinez. Number 24. Tina Martinez was out of the lineup in game two against Randy Johnson. Randy Velarde got the start at first base. Martinez was 0 for 3 with a walk in game one. He has an opportunity to put the Yankees on top. Two on, two out here in the first inning. With no score. Ball one. Another Yankee hitter with good career numbers against Brian Anderson. Velarde watching tonight as Tino Martinez takes a strike. One and one. Jorge Posada waits to hit next. Tino Martinez with his days as a Yankee dwindling, perhaps a free agent to be at the end of the season. A 1 1. Into right center field. Back is Finley on the run. A leap and a catch, and the inning is over. Steve Finley went to get it in right center. A threat for the Yankees. A hit, a stolen base, a walk, and then this. And then that from Steve Finley after one. Game three. No score. Welcome back to Yankee Stadium, second inning. There is no score. Reggie Sanders first step, then a Rubio Durazo, the DH. Be followed by Matt Williams. Strike one to Reggie Sanders, who's three out of six in this World Series. They have settled on him as their cleanup hitter. We mentioned four different cleanup hitters during the five game NLCS. Count even one ball, one strike. Reggie Sanders does something during batting practice that is rather odd. He hits with the weighted donut just below the hitting circle. What that does, it speeds up the hands when you take that donut off. So you're looking at a guy in Reggie Sanders who has yet to strike out in this World Series, but overall in his postseason career has had 75 at bats with 32 strikeouts. Trying to make better contact, and he has the count in his favor, two and one. Chased it there, two and two. He'll swing through that high fastball. But interestingly, that donut that goes around the bat, the weighted donut, was invented by the former Yankee, Elston Howard. No donut on the bat here as Roger Clemens tries to slip one by that bat. Two balls, two strikes. One out. With 
Reggie Sanders, pitchers who throw hard try to elevate. You see how Sanders was under the riding fastball of Clemens. So far, two strikeouts, one walk, no hits allowed by Roger Clemens. What's your early feeling on Roger Clemens? To me, he doesn't look too comfortable out there yet. I, I, I think he does. I think he does. I think he he looks when when you compare him to most postseason starts, he looks like he's free of injury. I think the hamstring is fine, and he looks very composed. He is so intense that uh, it's very difficult to, to get a read on on Rogers. Certainly, fans in New England, Toronto know that. Certainly, Joe Torre and Mel Stottlemyre know that. Sure. When you ask him how's he feeling. They can't give you a real firm answer as a Ruby Dorazo gets on with a one out hit. He can only obviously give Mel Stottlemyre and Joe Torre his assessment whether it's an honest assessment or not those guys don't know and I think they believe that no matter how that hamstring feels Roger Clemens is going to take the ball and we have seen that hamstring tighten up on him during the course of these starts in the postseason chilly nights here in New York. And he has looked good in the early innings only to leave after completing five at the most in any postseason start to this point. One on one out. Here's Matt Williams. And there's a strike on the outside corner. Joe Torrey telling us when Roger Clemens made that game four ALCS start. He looked good early. It's starting to tighten up on him. And he took the wrap off the right hamstring that he had on it because it was so uncomfortable. And even though he had not allowed a run, he ended up going only five innings. That's in the dirt. And the count one and one on Matt Williams. Fine play by Jorge Posada, who has had his problems this year. The Yankees with 22 pass balls on the season. Of course, this ball in the dirt. And Posada got an assist from Dale Scott, the home plate umpire. Otherwise, that ball's through the trap door. Eighteen pass balls this season, the most in the big leagues, as Roger Clemens, with a count even, one ball, one strike, works to Matt Williams. One and two. Eighteen pass balls by Posada, 22 for the catching staff. So you're going on record. You and I are going to disagree here yeah, in a second. That's all right. I think Clemens is not only composed, but I think he looks relaxed. I think he's throwing well. And I think Joe Torre and Mel Stottlemyre are satisfied right now with what they're seeing. And you go, that's all right. He's saying he does not have that look about him that I have seen from him before as Williams strikes out for his third strikeout. And we'll see how it plays out one on two away. I, th I think it's good that he doesn't have that look that a lot of uh, fans Yankee fans at all the splitter going down to get Matt Williams. I think one of the reasons that Clemens hasn't been successful in the postseason he's given in to his feelings the intensity He's one of the more intense pitchers but along with that intensity if you're going to be successful you have to find your comfort zone. Grace grounds one to the right side. Good play by Tino Martinez. And the inning is over. The Yankee infielders will tell you people do not realize how good a first baseman Tino Martinez is. They will realize it if and when he is gone. Three strikeouts so far for the Texan. Bottom of the second Yankees bat Posada Spencer and Brocious will be the hitters the six seven and eight men in the lineup for Joe Torre if anybody gets on Soriano against Brian Anderson gave up a hit a stolen base and a walk in the first inning then used that good defense behind him and it was the National League's best defense during the 2001 regular season when Finley went to run down a ball in right center field to keep the Yankees off the scoreboard. One ball one strike on Posada. Brian Anderson on the disabled list twice this year ineffective early. He's really changed his delivery. He used to bring it both hands over his head and delivering the ball but now as you see rarely above the shoulders. This is earlier in the year now watch the hands go over the head. 
And his present delivery to the right of your screen, shoulder high. Shorter stride, and he doesn't do as much with his hands. Two balls and a strike. That caught the outside corner in the early indication with the home plate umpire, Dale Scott, as he is giving side to side with the strike zone tonight. That was a changeup, a circle change, and to right handed batters, that's his best pitch. A liberal strike zone, you're right, by Dale Scott. Here's a 2 2. Back out there, and Posada fouled it away. To give the full indication and the full picture of what it's like here at Yankee Stadium tonight, obviously that won't completely translate through a television set. But the security level here at Yankee Stadium is unprecedented. Two balls, two strikes. Now a full count. A late arriving crowd because of the security measures taken for fans, media personnel, you name it, to get into this ballpark. They have metal detectors outside the gate areas that fans, anybody who comes into the stadium, have to pass through to get in. Posada. Deep left field, one to nothing, New York. Series with the Yankees trailing two games to none going out to Oakland, where Posada hit a right handed home run against Barry Zito for the only run of that game. He and his teammates turned it over to the combination of Messina and Rivera to win that game, win the next two, and move on to the ALCS. Posada goes deep batting right handed. Here in game three of the World Series with the Yankees down two games to none. Go, go, go. Spencer follows it up with a ground out to short back to the home run. You can see Damian Miller when a catcher is set up outside and he has to go to his left. That's bad news. Usually they don't catch those balls. This one an 85 mile an hour fastball. Brian Anderson giving up 25 home runs on the year and one here in the series. So for the Yankees their first run since the first inning of game one and it's Posada who hit five home runs batting right handed during the regular season. He has hit two home runs in the postseason both of them right handed off Zito and now off Anderson one ball one strike on Scott Brocious. Joe major league hitters are trained to hit that ball in the middle of the plate. And most pitchers, regardless of how hard they throw, can't get away with the middle of the plate fastball. Change up that misses and the count two balls and a strike. Watch Damian Miller move to the left. Middle of the plate fastball, one nothing Yankees. Now with one out, nobody on, a 2 1 pitch to Brocious. Council, two out. Alfonso Soriano will be the hitter as we remind you that this fall Fox presents Kiefer Sutherland in 24 TV guide says Fox's 24 is 24 karat entertainment and the New York Times calls it an edge of the seat thriller. That's the series premiere of 24 coming Tuesday November 6th to Fox. With two out nobody on and a run home Soriano will bat. Every time you read that promo, I can't help but think of Willie Mays. Two dozen, as Kurt Flood used to call it. Soriano takes a strike on the outside corner. Another wide strike granted by the home plate umpire, Dale Scott. Willie Howard Mays had a few fans here in New York City. 
It's 0 and 2 now on Soriano. And Mr. Mays godson had a pretty good year this year. Woo. Barry Bonds with his 73 home runs. Top of the order represented by Knobloch next, but two out, nobody on, and a one ball, two strike count on Soriano. 12 more home runs than Roger Maris hit in New York City in this stadium. Not all of them here, obviously, in 1961. Interesting piece during the pregame show with Kevin Kennedy and Mark Grace. Grace, one of the many veterans on this Diamondbacks team, getting a look at Yankee Stadium and just being in awe. Walking around this ballpark, going through Monument Park, soaking up the history, the tradition here. And Bob Brenly will tell you the, the off day workout was probably more valuable for his team than any other situation this postseason for Arizona to come here to not be in awe here the first game of this series at Yankee Stadium game three to get that out of the way yesterday get the awes out of your system here's a 2 2 pitch to Soriano broken bat base hit a two out single for the rookie second baseman. Change up. That has a screwball action. That ball going down and away off the end of the bat. So Soriano was left with a toothpick. <laughs> As the ball floated into center, the big end of the bat ended up down by Willie Randolph, the Yankees' third base coach. And now Knobloch bats. He popped up his first time. He is 0 for 9 in this World Series. And the battle right now is as much between Anderson and Soriano as the pitcher. He was very close to balking then. That's a deceptive thing about Brian Anderson is the head jerk when he throws to first base. You know, Lee Mazzilli was just talking to the first base umpire, Ed Rapuano, after that throw over by Brian Anderson. So the point was made by Mazzilli and the complaint was lodged and Mazzilli giving a reaction after that throw over by Anderson as well. Looks toward home throws to first. That is very deceptive and very close to a balk but all left handers good moves are close to a balk. So is Andy Pettit. I was just going to say if any team shouldn't complain about that particular <laughs> throw over to first right. it'd be the Yankees You're right and if anybody yells out of the Yankee dugout it can't be Pettit uh -uh. <laughs> so Lee Mazzilli and Alfonso Soriano will try to figure out how to get a jump on Brian Anderson Lee Mazzilli wearing a microphone we will hear what he had to say a moment ago as the count goes to two and oh here's Lee Mazzilli That way to throw. Go that way. That's all. Subtle made his point. Mm -hmm. And it registered with first base umpire Ed Rapuano. If you throw to first, you have to step toward first. That's what Lee was talking about. See, that's very, very close to a ball. There was a time in spring training about 15 years ago where Major League Baseball drew a line to show left handed pitchers in particular where they could step going to first base to get them used to it and the umpires used to calling that balk on similar moves 2 0 change up and not block way out in front two and one a lot of times hitters will give runners a chance to run and then they become more passive at the plate because of all the throws to first base. See if Soriano runs with a two ball one strike count. See if he is comfortable enough yet against Brian Anderson. Seeing him for the first time. He stays put not blocked. Trying to shoot the ball to right fouled it back two and two. The hitless Derek Jeter waits on deck. Anderson, by the way, called for one balk this season, in case you're wondering. 
working just over 133 innings. Here's a 2 2, and there's a throw to first. And Rapuano nodding all the way. Lee Mazzilli is looking into the dugout for some support. <laughs> The first baseman, the runner at first, the first base coach, obviously with the best view of Brian Anderson. Now block pops it down the right field line, slicing foul, and it drops untouched on top of the tarp. Still two and two on now block. Very nice try by Craig Council sliding into the tarp. That's usually the approach that outfielders or a shortstop in left field, a second baseman in right field will take to avoid an injury. Could be confusing with Rudy at second and Rudy next to the Yankee dugout. Rudolph Gi Giuliano, the mayor of New York City, and Rudy, because of his Notre Dame ties, playing second base. His nickname among his teammates who hit a game tying home run in game one. Another throw over and Soriano. Is at least getting a better read on this move by Brian Anderson. Mm -hmm. Anderson allowed a lead off home run to Posada. Spencer and Brocious grounded out. Soriano single to center. Soriano running as Knobloch pops it in the air and into the glove of Steve Finley to end the inning. The Yankees get their first run since the first inning of game one. A leadoff home run by Posada. Down two games to none. The Yankees lead game three. One to nothing. Brian Anderson was keeping a close eye on Soriano at first. So was Lee Mazzilli. That's the balk move. If you go forward and throw the first, that's a deceptive move. The deception comes here. Instead of stepping here, he steps there. When you throw the first, you have to step to first. Otherwise, it's a balk. And that's what Lee Mazzilli was talking about. Here's Damian Miller, the Arizona catcher, with Walmack and Council to follow. Talked about the different lineups that Bob Brenly and his staff put together they settled on this one. I think wanting this one all along because they wanted Womack in the number nine spot. But Bob Brentley wanted to wait until Womack was told why he was batting in the number nine position as opposed to considering it a demotion. A guy who spent his entire career in the National League a lot of American League managers put speed in the number nine spot. Right. Womack, who is hitless in this series, was fine with it. But I don't care where you put me in the lineup, just put me in there. One ball, two strikes on Damian Miller. The reason that American League managers will put speed in the nine hole is they wire the speed, nine and one, and perhaps even two in this particular situation. You don't want to put a slow runner like Damian Miller at nine and Wilmot eight for instance. Foul tip hung on to struck him out. Posada came up with it and that strikeout number four for Roger Clemens. Just got a piece of it and Posada catches it before it hits the ground. <laughs> so one more strikeout number four on the night Tony Womack will bat. Hitless 0 for 8 in the postseason hitting only 200 with one RBI but that RBI that big game five game winner in the division series against St. Louis hit it off Steve Klein after he missed a squeeze bunt with runners on at first and third and a two out base hit to left center field is only RBI in the postseason. One ball one strike from Roger Clemens. See Clemens talking to himself on the mound after getting the ball back and making different motions. When I talked last inning about him not looking comfortable his body language to me is atypical when Clemens is on a roll which he started this season starting the year 20 and one the first pitcher 
in the history of Major League Baseball to accomplish that. But lately, his last six starts, 0 and 3 with an ERA over four. We talked about his not starting in nine days, and once again. <laughs> Comfortable.com, right? Well, as long as he keeps piling up strikeouts, I think the overall answer would be well, he's comfortable enough to strike out four hitters through two and a third innings, and he has given up only one hit. But as far as dialed in with his catcher, Posada, and looking like he can't wait to get the ball back and bring it back to the plate, I just don't see that yet from Roger Clemens. But the end result is good for the Yankees. So far, not good for Arizona. One, two pitch. Two and two. I am not computer literate, as you know, Joe. But I just is found that out why what... you never return my email. <laughs> uh, I just found out what dot com meant. Right. Dot comfortable. <laughs> two balls, two strikes, one out, nobody on. Womack trying to jumpstart this Arizona offense. Strikes out on the splitter. Five strikeouts now for Roger Clemens. Back to the top of the order. Craig Council, his teammates call him Rudy. Here's what his manager has to say about him. He's the smartest baseball player I've ever been around. He's always prepared. He's always in the right spot. Uh, you never have to worry about where his count's going to be because you know he's going to be exactly where he should be. He, he's one of the best two strike hitters in baseball. He, he every at bat he's up there grinding and making that pitcher work. And he's always thinking of what he needs to do in a certain situation. He has delivered this postseason for Arizona with a game three division series home run to put the Diamondbacks on top for good. Backing up a start from Miguel Batista. A big win in St. Louis then. The NLCS most valuable player, a home run in game one of the World Series. He reached on an error, was picked off back in the first inning, and now he's behind on the count 0 1. Interesting first pitch to Craig Council, the first slider that Clemens has thrown tonight. Broken bat. Soriano takes care of his counterpart, Council. And we go to the bottom of the third inning. It'll be Jeter, O'Neill, and Bernie Williams. Comfortable, not comfortable. Clemens has allowed no runs on one hit so far. Bottom of the third inning, and Jeter, O'Neill, and Williams will bat against Brian Anderson, who has allowed one run on three Yankee hits. He's walked one, and the run came on a leadoff home run by Posada back in the second. Jeter is 0 for 8 against Arizona pitching in this World Series. From the hole, Womack can't make the throw, and Jeter has his first hit. One of the advantages when you can run well, it draws the third baseman in. Matt Williams, because he was playing in, couldn't get to it. Left to Womack, who bobbles the ball, an infield hit for Derek Jeter. You can see Williams on the grass and the bobble by Womack, but even had Tony come up with it, no chance to get Jeter. That brings in O'Neill, who singled and stole a base back in the first inning. That was followed by a walk to Bernie Williams. Tina Martinez lined into deep right center, a terrific running catch by Finley, ended the first inning. Neil takes ball one. Thinking about running here. Jeter 27 steals during the regular season. None so far in the postseason. And the Yankees now have four hits after amassing a total of three in games one and two. One ball, one strike on O'Neill. They had three hits in game one, three hits in game two. The Yankees have four hits in game three and lead one to nothing. One of the
the things that getting a lead and getting your leadoff runner on it opens up your options if you're a manager. It run, steal. O'Neill bounces it up the middle. That leads Council to the bag and a 4-3 double play, two out. Double plays. So the Yankees get nothing going on the base pass and O'Neill leads Council right to the base. Easily done by Craig Council. You mentioned the weather in the first inning and when you're Brian Anderson you got to think it's football weather. He is a huge University of Nebraska fan wears his helmet. Matter of fact he was wearing his helmet on Saturday morning at 845 when the Cornhuskers started their game against the University of Oklahoma 845 Central Time. Bernie Williams hits it hard. Williams didn't know he had it. And he ends up making the play. Matt Williams trapped it against his body, looked up, realized he had it. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Inning over. Fourth inning, one to nothing, New York. We welcome you back to Yankee Stadium, fourth inning, a one to nothing New York lead. A lot of flags all over this ballpark. Anheuser Busch changing their signage out in right center field with that waving American flag, and then in center field up by the speakers, that flag has a story. That flag was flying at the World Trade Center on September the 11th. It was recovered three days after the towers came down. It is the only flag that was flying at the World Trade Center that day. One ball one strike on Steve Finley It was found with 12 stars missing covered in ash and it's believed to have come from one of the upper floors of the Twin Towers. Police officers have been taking that flag from one funeral to another as they have laid their fallen brothers to rest taking that to the funerals and bringing it to Yankee Stadium for game three of this World Series. Three balls and a strike from Roger Clemens to Steve Finley. One sign of patriotism after another. Not only here in New York but across the country. No matter what the venue. Another terrific rendition of the Star Spangled Banner before tonight's game from Max Von Essen. A high strike on Finley in the count full three balls two strikes. And from one seventh inning stretch to the next, there have been so many emotional moments in the last month of the regular season and throughout the postseason in baseball and in all sports. Here's a 3 2 to Finley, a leadoff walk. Second time Finley's walked tonight. He walked with one out back in the first inning, and he walks here to start the fourth. So the Diamondbacks here in the fourth inning open with getting their leadoff hitter on. But there's a big difference when you get that leadoff hitter on and you can run. You have seen the moves of Brian Anderson, but once again, Roger Clemens, even though he's picked off one tonight, three during the regular season, Diamondbacks feel they can run on him and run on him often. Tying run aboard with nobody out here in the fourth inning and Gonzalez reaching for that pitch strike one. They also at other points in their lineup the Diamondbacks if the situation is right will test Clemens with bunts sure because of Clemens hamstring trouble and because they believe he's had a tough time not only fielding his position but wheeling and throwing to a base be it second base obviously third base or more times and not first base. That's how he hurt the hamstring a little more than a month ago trying to feel the ball to his right toward third base. Luis Gonzalez three home runs this postseason. A 
two run home run. That big game one victory out at Bank One Ballpark. And the whole hero and two. He had a pitch to hit then. Luis Gonzalez shaking his head. He knows that you don't get too many good pitches to hit, but he had one on that 0 1 count. Clemens has struck out five. One on, nobody out. 0 2 pitch. Opposite way, base hit. An 0 2 pitch from Clemens. A base hit from Gonzalez to follow the walk, and it's two on with nobody out for Arizona here in the fourth inning. You may remember earlier with Finley on at first base, we talked about the Yankees not thinking Gonzalez will hit the ball to left field. Derek Jeter close to second base. And Gonzalez on a mistake by Clemens pokes one to left. Fine piece of hitting by Luis Gonzalez. And now a opportunity set up for the heart of the order. The four, five, and six hitters coming up. Reggie Sanders, who struck out his first time, who is three out of seven so far in this World Series, bats with two on, nobody out. Even though he's batting cleanup, I wouldn't be surprised if Bob Brindley has him bun here. It wouldn't be a bad play because remember Sanders is vulnerable to the high fastball. You have to play the situations. Normally cleanup hitters don't bunt, but you may see one here. However, it's not Randy Johnson or Kurt Schilling pitching for Arizona. True. Giving up and out with the cleanup hitter. He's swinging away. He flies to right. O'Neill makes the catch. Finley tags and goes to third. It's first and third, one out. Not much of a swing by Reggie Sanders there and he becomes the first out here in the fourth inning. Yeah, you hate to make outs like this taking a defensive swing on the first pitch. If that were 0 and 2 1 and 2 you could understand it. Strong throw by O'Neill but Finley with an excellent jump from second base. Base running puts the tying run 90 feet away. No chance for O'Neill, and now it's first and third, one out for Arubio Durazo. Frustrated last year with a right wrist injury, frustrated this year by a concussion and a sore lower back. But a guy who was a part of this very good Arizona bench. Five pinch hit home runs, 12 overall, and the Diamondbacks as a team hit 14 pinch hit home runs. Ryan Anderson who has pitched well through three innings allowing only one run watching Durazo who has first and third one out out in front of him he takes ball one from Clemens Durazo has always been a hero in his hometown of Hermosillo Mexico it's about three and a half hours south of Tucson but that two run home run off Tommy Glavin made him a national hero. Signed in 99 out of the Mexican League. Ahead on the count here 2 and 0. Here's the home run he hit in game five batting for Mark Grace who had pulled his right hamstring. Just got it over the wall it just did stay fair and that was the. Home run he hit against Tom Glavin. Which put Arizona up for good. He is an enormously talented hitter. Diamondback signed Mark Grace, and that put him on the bench, but he's a regular player waiting to happen. That caught the outside corner two and one. He just flew through the Arizona system his first year in 99. 24 home runs in the minor leagues, came up and hit 11. 52 games last year. Two different times. Procedures on his right wrist. But a good left handed batter as Clemens looks to third and then turns and looks to first. Nobody moved. Tying run at third, go ahead run at first with a one out here in the top of the fourth inning. Game three with Arizona up, two games to none.
three and one. Matt Williams with that seventh inning three run home run in game two waits to hit next. Dangerous pitch coming to a Ruby Eldorazo. Clemens will stay away. And miss to load the bases. Two walks a hit in the inning. And the bases are loaded with only one out. And a patient at bat by Durazo. The first fastball missed outside. And then Clemens missed with the splitter. The fastball catches the corner. But then away. And away. So now the bases are loaded for Matt Williams. We set it in game two. Booed in Arizona during the division series. He gave the Diamondbacks and Randy Johnson some breathing room with that three run home run in the seventh inning two nights ago. Williams chased it up and out of the strike zone, strike one. Clemens able to work on the windup in this situation. Gives him a little more momentum coming to the plate with that bad right hand string. Here's an 0 1 to Matt Williams. The opposite way to Paul O'Neill. That'll tie the game. Tagging and scoring is Finley. It's 1 1. Moving to third is Gonzalez. As Matt Williams knocks home his fifth run of this World Series. Roger Clemens with that first fastball and Williams swinging through it tries to come back again with the fastball but Williams ready for it here lines it to right field Finley scores easily and the Diamondbacks tie it the other runner Luis Gonzalez tagged and went to third watching O'Neill back up on it now right. the runners at the corners two out here is Mark Grace. Bounced into a force out his first time up and he grounds to second. Soriano picks it up and throws him out. And Roger Clemens got into big trouble. Got out of it by allowing only one run, the tying run. Bottom of the fourth inning. Martinez will start it for New York, tied 1 1. Bottom of the fourth inning, Tino Martinez, Jorge Posada, and Shane Spencer will bat for New York. It's a 1 1 game. Brian Anderson has done his job to this point. Allowing run one run on four hits. The run on the home run by Posada leading off the second. Now Tino Martinez takes a strike. Tim, you and I were last year, game five of the American League Championship Series, and the Yankee players said after that game they had never heard the Yankee Stadium crowd that loud. To be honest about it, as Martinez grounds out to Womack. The crowd really has not been that loud in nope. this game three. Well, of course, in that game, they beat the Seattle Mariners 12 to 3. And it gave the crowd that mushrooming effect they built on each inning. And these Diamondback pitchers have uh, been throwing crowd quellers at the Yankees. <laughs> Here's Jorge Posada, who's responsible for the only Yankee run with a leadoff home run in the second. After doing this, his last time up. But now the Diamondbacks have tied it. And the 0 1 to Posada. 0 2. The Diamondbacks came into this portion of this World Series expecting a raucous crowd. Brian Anderson, a fan of college football, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, as you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. had his thoughts on what he expected with this crowd. As Posada hits a two tapper to Craig Council, two out. Here's what Brian Anderson expected coming in to this start at Yankee Stadium. 
it's a situation where the fans are going to be loud. They're loud anyway. Uh, this just adds to it, you know, the sense of urgency I'm sure that they feel. And, and uh, we've, we've watched a couple of the, you know, the postseason games from earlier in the postseason at Yankee Stadium on TV, and the, and the crowd is, uh, you know, I've likened it all week to a European soccer match, is, you know, the, the chants and, and how loud they are. And you can't even call it a buzz. It's more like a, a deep rumble. <laughs> the pitching of Kurt Schilling, Randy Johnson, and tonight, the man we just heard from, Brian Anderson, has quieted this crowd considerably as Anderson misses low. Ball one to Spencer. Well, the score is almost like a European soccer match. 1 1. Pitch on 1 0 is outside 2 0. Well, the best way uh, to keep the crowd out of it, obviously, is to throw strong pitching. The Diamondbacks didn't have an opportunity to do that in games one and two because it was their crowd that was on top of Kurt Schilling and Randy Johnson, two of the best back to back performances I have ever seen. Regular season, postseason, spring training, spring training, little league, little league. Here's a 2 1 to Spencer. Sounded like he broke his bat. Odd sound, but Spencer stays at the plate with that one of the count two and two. I mean, to have the kind of stuff that Kurt Schilling and Randy Johnson both had in games one and two, and to hit the spots that they hit was just remarkable. It was not an inability for the Yankees to hit, but powerful pitching that got them. Let's go back to what we talked about at the start of the night. All right. It is our impression that Kurt Schilling will pitch tomorrow night. Yep. Regardless of how the series stands, as Spencer pops it straight up behind the plate, Damian Miller can't get there. Zigzagging all the way back to the backstop, and with the wind grabbing that foul ball, they kept pushing it away from the Arizona catcher. The one thing uh, that's unusual about Yankee Stadium, and Bob Brinley was talking about it, is how from home plate and the First baseline, third baseline, how the field slopes down. And it takes some getting used to if you're a catcher. And obviously, Damon, Damian Miller playing his first game at Yankee Stadium. There is a slight slope from home plate down toward the fence. And Diamondbacks are hopeful that that misplay by Miller doesn't cost them. It leads to a walk as Spencer reaches and it gets brocious to the plate for New York. One on, two out. Our meeting with Bob Brentley was delayed by a conference between Kurt Schilling and the Arizona manager. Kurt Schilling pleading his case to pitch game four. Meanwhile, Miguel Batista, who has really pitched well, not only in this postseason, but down the stretch for Arizona, is the other option. He is, however, available in the bullpen tonight if the Diamondbacks need him. Rocha's grounds to short. Womack can't make the play. And the inning continues. So Miller misses on the pop up. Then the walk. Now an error on Womack. Two on with two out. Two easy plays messed up by the Diamondbacks. The one by Damian Miller. And now Tony Womack. He had it in his glove. He looked up. Prematurely trying to go to second base. Watch the look. Hit the heel of the glove and popped out. That is the first error of this World Series for the Diamondbacks, and it brings Alfonso Soriano to the plate. Wind blowing out to left and a strike from Brian Anderson. We talked during the American League Championship Series. Don Mattingly used to say, despite where the flag may be blowing, the handle of the bat points the direction of the wind. If that's the case, if you believe Don Mattingly, and many people around here do, the wind is blowing out to left. As a strike is called over the outside corner, to make it 0 and 2 and Anderson catches a break from Dale Scott. Soriano thought the ball was away. I keep in mind that Soriano is not a patient hitter. And if you go out of the strike zone with the count 0 and 2 1 and 2 you've got a chance to get him. 
The Diamondbacks have made the most of Yankee mistakes so far in this series. Now the Yankees so good during this postseason run at exploiting mistakes by the opposition have that chance here in the fourth inning with two on two out. Bottom of the fourth in a 1 1 game. Spencer and Brocious, the runners, the 0 2. One ball, two strikes. So Brian Anderson, who has not won a start since the 22nd of July, has not made a start since September the 8th, is working here in the fourth inning of a 1 1 game in the World Series at Yankee Stadium. Continuing to make good pitches, and Soriano fought that off to stay at the plate one and two. He got ahead of Soriano with two fastballs. He came in, then went away, back inside. So he is indeed expanding the strike zone on Soriano. A walk and an error have led to a scoring opportunity for New York. Time called as Anderson took too long coming set. A lot of times when you shake off that many times, it better be a fastball because the minute you shake your head, a hitter thinks breaking ball. So I think he'll get a fastball here. On one and two, Soriano pops it up. Another chance for Miller who gives way. Now drops it, and the go-ahead run will score. Now they're saying what? Foul ball. Foul ball. Nobody touched it. Now they said ball. Nobody touched it. I think Mark Grace and Bob Brindley in the dugout is going, no, foul ball. Nobody touched the ball. Here comes Joe Torrey. But once you drop it and once you look that bad on a ball, if it, does, it doesn't touch the glove and it doesn't reach either base, it's foul. So what? Joe Torrey out to argue <laughs> when this ball fell and it was untouched. Look by Damian the, Miller it hops foul and as it's picked up it's ruled a foul ball Miller evidently missed that altogether. Yeah that's exactly right but look at the spin on this ball to take it foul my goodness plopping on the soft turf everybody thinking it's a fair ball you can see Derek Jeter he thought the run scored and properly called by Dale Scott the home plate umpire my gosh. Dale Scott right on top of it recognizing that Miller did not touch it and as it was foul that's when Miller got to it picked it up it's a foul ball and the runners will return to first and second and the count remains one ball two strikes. How's that for bizarre play. Here's Shane Spencer. Now he hits third and sees Miller's problem. Race is home but it's a foul ball. My gosh. So still two on with two out and Soriano hits this one foul and out of play to the relief of Damian Miller. Two quick outs and then three missed plays by the Diamondbacks. The pop fly on Spencer he walked the bobble by shortstop Tony Womack and now another missed play by Damian Miller and they're giving him an error. Good call. Two errors in the inning. Two balls, two strikes on Soriano. Here it is one more time. The wind playing a factor. Did he touch it? Didn't look like it. But the spin of the ball taking it foul is unbelievable. You can understand a, a bounce like that on the artificial surface, but not on grass. The wind playing tricks with these pop ups and Miller has struggled on two chances as Soriano had a pitch up in his eyes and fouled it back still two and two. Best pitch he has had to hit in this at bat. And he missed it. So what a break for Arizona. On a mistake by Damian Miller.
The 2-2. Two -two. Soriano fouls it away again. I guess the moral of that little uh, vignette is if you're going to miss it, don't touch it. <laughs> That's how much Miller struggled with it. Uh, yeah. He didn't even get a piece of it. So Soriano in a battle with Brian Anderson two on two out two balls two strikes and another foul. An 11 pitch at bat. For Brian Anderson to Alfonso Soriano. Seems like Anderson should have recorded five outs in this inning. Two two. Full count and the runners will go. Clearly outside. And now the crowd climbs into it. Runners take off. Soriano hits it into right center field. Finley back. Squeezes it. And a crazy inning is over. Damian Miller back to the dugout, relieved that these mistakes did not cost Arizona a run or runs. After four, tied 1 1. Back after this from your local Fox station. Well, how many times do you see it? A catcher who makes mistakes on pop ups two times in one half inning lead off the next half inning. And here's <laughs> Damian Miller to lead off after this play. Joe, between innings or during the break, you were talking about why Brian Anderson didn't catch the ball, and you're exactly right. Now, Damian Miller hits a swiver back to Clemens, one pitch, one out. You were kidding uh, during the league championship series about a pitcher. You know, occasionally they can catch the ball, and you're exactly right. I mean, that play was a much easier play for Brian Anderson, who's a good athlete. You can see Miller going out. He's turning around. He's looking around. He misses the ball, fortunately for the Diamondbacks, as Anderson should really be given a lot of credit by his battery mate right there. And I'm sure he is. Well, what we also saw going to commercial last half inning was Miller pick the ball up turn around and look at the runners on base. I think he had no idea that that ball was fouled. No I, don't, I agree with you by that time by the time he went to pick the ball up he was so disoriented he didn't know where he was foul or fair. One ball one strike. And <laughs> there's the. There's the relief by Damian Miller after. I think right there he learns that it's a foul ball and there's no run score. It, it's, it appeared to me also that Mark Grace wanted to make sure and was the first one to tell Vale Scott. Walmack is now in the hole, one ball, two strikes. I think Grace knew the rule immediately to his experience himself. He said foul ball. And Dale Scott agreed with it. Bizarre play. Here's a one ball, two strike pitch. Two and two. Well, you really have to give Dale Scott, the home plate umpire, a lot of credit sure because, do. in my opinion, he was the only guy standing in that group who knew that ball was foul. That's right. And he was right on top of that, right when the run was crossing the plate. And everybody was looking around the home plate umpire Dale Scott put both arms up in the air to call it foul immediately as Womack pops it out of play again. Dale Scott right there watching the ball watching the ball and immediately calls it foul. Not only was he close enough to call it foul but close enough to see that the ball didn't hit Miller's club. Man. One out, nobody on. Two balls, two strikes on Womack, who struck out his first time. Now a full count with Council on deck. 
So say it again. In effect, Brian Anderson got six outs in that. <laughs> That's right. Two pop-ups, a ground ball, a shortstop, and then the three regular outs. Three two pitch Womack good play by Clemens so much for him not being able to field his position two out nobody on back to the top of the order. There's a strike to Craig Council that was Daddy Warbuck singing wasn't it. Yeah from Andy on Broadway. Council 0 for 2 in this game one out of 10 has only hit the home run in game one. Ace is empty with two out. One ball, one strike. Diamondbacks just thinking about tomorrow, hopeful that they drive away all the sorrow. <laughs> so far, everything has been just how the Diamondbacks would have wanted to start. They started with both Schilling and then Johnson. Some thought Bob Brenly should hold Randy Johnson for this game. The first game in New York. Bob Brentley went with his top two in games one and two. And the Diamondbacks rolled into New York up two games to none. Now Brian Anderson is picked up. Where Johnson left off and has worked four tough innings, allowing one run on four hits. Council, two balls, two strikes. Started at 54 degrees. We are down to 50 degrees. Humidity is still 27 percent however and it's down to 82 out in Phoenix. Roger Clemens trying to get through five. He does. Strikeout number six. Top of the order for the Yankees in the bottom of the fifth. In a 1 1 game. The Ohio native who grew up loving Nebraska football goes back to the hill on a cool night in New York. Bottom of the fifth inning, a 1 1 score. And there's a reason why Brian Anderson started following the Cornhuskers as he misses up and away with ball one to Chuck Knobloch. Back in 1984 on January the 2nd Miami was number one Nebraska was number two. Tom Osborne the coach went for two points with 20 seconds left. And an 11 year old right outside Cleveland thought that was the gutsiest move he had ever seen and the classiest move. The guy was Brian Anderson. 17 years ago. So instead of playing it safe, kicking the extra point, making it 31 31, and getting a share of the national championship, yeah. as Knobloch takes a strike, it's 2 and 1. Ryan Anderson was taken with the aggressiveness of Tom Osborne in Nebraska going for two. They didn't make it. And Miami was number one that year, and Brian Anderson was hooked for life. Here's a two ball one strike pitch bad swing by Knobloch good pitch by Anderson two and two. Chuck Knobloch is caught in between the worst thing that can happen to a hitter with the count in his favor a check swing again that's an understandable swing oh and two one and two not two and one. Two two. Knobloch stays up there. Chuck Knobloch is 0 for 10 in this World Series. Two balls, two strikes. And that's out of play. We understand that although the temperature is 50 degrees, Tim. The wind chill is 38. And it looks it. So a cool night here in the Bronx. Diamondbacks and Yankees tied 1 1, fifth inning, and not blocked. It's a foul.
talked about it during the league championship series. Chuck Knobloch has so much to do before the ball is in the hitting area. He holds the bat flat. He's got to get it perpendicular to the ground. He's got to cock it and then swing. That's too much to do before the ball's in the hitting area. Consequently, the ball that he pulls is a ball down and in. Anything up, too much to do. That's off and out of the strike zone, three and two. The shorter the trigger, the quicker the bat. If you need more tips, go see Harry the Hat. You got it. Pop and glide, pop and glide. See the ball before you strive. <laughs> Three balls, two strikes. Ryan Anderson trying to retire the leadoff hitter. Now blocked with a two hopper to count exactly what you talked about with that pitch up. And an easy two hopper to the right side off the bat of Knobloch, who's now 0 for 11 in this series. Flat bat. Now watch, he has to cock it. That goes flatter, and that comes back. That's too much to do before the ball gets there. You end up hitting the ball back here instead of out there. So now it's Jeter who singled his last time up for his only hit so far in the World Series. He's one out of nine. Batting in front of Paul O'Neill. Kidding about Harry Walker, who was an excellent hitting instructor. The one thing that Harry used to say is stay behind the ball. And in order to do that, you have to wait. And when you wait, you have to have quick hands. So the two elements of good hitting. Waiting, quick hands. Nobody stays behind the ball better in this Yankee lineup than Derek Jeter. Here's a 1 0. To the left side, right at Walmart. Jeter grounds out, two away. Two up, two down, and Brian Anderson is trying to get through five strong innings here in game three. Don't miss the biggest moments of this year's World Series. Call 1 800 Baseball Now to order your official World Series VHS or DVD. That's 1 800 Baseball. There'll be an entire chapter on the foul ball hit by Alfonso Soriano last inning. Complete with diagrams and commentary from Tim McCarver. <laughs> Oh man, what a play. O'Neill is one out of two tonight. First start of this series. Takes a strike. The Yankees who missed an opportunity last inning to jump on Diamondback mistakes. Yeah. Now look out at Paul O'Neill, who's in an 0 2 hole with two out, nobody on, and nothing doing in the fifth inning. O'Neill, 21 home runs during the regular season, two this postseason, ball one. Hit both home runs this postseason during the ALCS off Aaron Seeley. Game one and game five. A one two to O'Neill. That'll get out of play. The Diamondbacks have done their homework. They're having Luis Gonzalez play at least straight away in left field. A lot of left handers when they hit the ball hit the ball with a tail to it and because of that here at Yankee Stadium you can play closer to the line more than you normally would so straight away here is a little closer to the line than it is on in most ballparks Anderson drops down sidearm and Paul O'Neill flips it into left field and into the glove of Luis Gonzalez. The Knicks won tonight. Jordan scored 19. Welcome to this game. We go to the sixth inning, tied 1-1.
but only two runs are on the board one on each side a home run by Posada and a sack fly by Matt Williams the Diamondbacks missing a chance for a big inning in the fourth inning and the Yankees not making anything out of three misplays two errors by the Diamondbacks in the bottom of the fourth including one play where a run was basically taken off the board for the Yankees when a ball hit and kicked foul. You've heard that expression in baseball that you can't give a team four outs in an inning. Well, the Diamondbacks gave the Yankees six outs that inning, and the Yankees couldn't score. Finley, who's drawn two walks and scored the only Arizona run, is ahead on the count here, two and one. Finley will look for something here, down and in. Take advantage of the short porch in right field. Arizona only two hits tonight. A 2 2 count on Finley is a 95 mile an hour fastball is poured in from Roger Clemens. I think that last pitch may have broken the webbing of Jorge Posada's glove. Pop, that gives you an idea of how hard Clemens is throwing. Jorge back for new leather. And he may have to go back to the clubhouse. So that will delay this a moment. And Clemens allowed to at least stay loose while Posada goes to get his other glove up in his locker. Here is tonight's box score for the Arizona Diamondbacks brought to you by John Hancock. Finley with two walks but caught stealing and he scored the only run he scored on a sack fly by Matt Williams who hit the sacrifice fly to right with the bases loaded. Otherwise only the two hits Gonzalez and Durazo who has a hit and a walk. That mitt looks a lot stiffer than the mitt he was using. It's a much, much newer catcher's mitt that he has for a guy who led Major League Baseball in fast balls. Yep. I'm sure he's not too comfortable behind the plate with anything but his gamer. That's exactly what I was thinking. Finley pops up. He's retired for the first time tonight. You can see the lacing and the webbing of the glove that Clemens snapped. And then Posada had to go out and get one that's not broken in quite as much as his gamer. A lot of trainers have the skill to restring some of those mitts. Steve Donahue does it for the Yankees. He's the assistant trainer, so perhaps they could have that mitt ready to go by the eighth inning. He's not comfortable with that catcher's mitt, though. Yeah. 0 and 2 on Gonzalez. What major leaguers do is they have a glove that they rely on, and then during the course of the year, they break in others. Whether they break them in, they have bat boys break them in, they have other people break them in during batting practice, and they have it in reserve. But it's like Linus without his blankie. <laughs> As Posada. Keeps the ball at the plate. One ball, two strikes on Luis Gonzalez. Or Roger without his splitty. <laughs> Roger, Roger has taken, Roger Clemens has taken to calling his split finger fastball Mr. Splitty. And this is uh, a recent phenomenon. Roger showing a, a very good sense of humor and talking about his splitter. <laughs> Here's a one two pitch to Gonzalez. That's foul. Well, for the first time this postseason, Roger Clemens has pitched past the fifth inning. So there is no doubt that his hamstring is more healthy than it was earlier. You can see Posada shaking his head right there. When a catcher does that, the pitcher's going to throw a fastball. He tells the pitcher to shake his head. To keep from the 
but throwing the same pitch and having the rhythm of the hitter get in tone with in tune with the with the pitcher and the catcher. That sound right? Sure. Did it? A one two. Gonzalez gets his hands out of the way. Well, I, I guess a little more clearly is a, a pitcher and a catcher. There's a certain rhythm to their pitch selection, and and hitters know that, and they get in, try to get into the same rhythm as the pitcher and the catcher. Gonzalez takes ball three. Luis, who wanted to say hi to the players at South Alabama, his alma mater, Coach Steve Kittrell. They're all watching. Coach Stanky Clubhouse. Eddie Stanky, who really put that program on the map, had a tremendous major league career. Here's a 3 2 pitch. Gonzalez strikes out, two gone. Strikeout number seven for Roger Clemens. 95 mile an hour high fastball to get Gonzalez. Second time tonight, Luis has been down on strikes. So with two out nobody on the rocket as his teammates call him and as the trainer works on the webbing of Jorge Posada's gamer first pitch is strike and that's been the order of the day for Roger Clemens is Reggie Sanders who's 0 for 2 is behind on the count on one. We've said it several times you elevate on Reggie Sanders a very good low ball hitter. So for the most part I think Clemens will stay away from the splitter and try to throw the high fastball. Oh, went to the splitter. And the count one ball one strike. Well early in the night we talked about does he look comfortable. Comfortable or not you can see him walking around the mound that that right hamstring is still bothering him and that was the scouting report the Diamondbacks had. Drop down bunts make him field his position while not totally healthy and they don't believe he'll be totally healthy until next season. He's pitching awfully well. Two out nobody on and now Sanders is drilled. Reggie Sanders hit on the left arm wrist or hand. And Roger Clemens who hit five batters during the regular season caught Reggie Sanders and that'll send him to first with two out and you hope he's okay. It appeared to hit Reggie in his left forearm. Yep. Fortunately was not a direct hit in that it glanced off the forearm. Usually when I'm not saying it doesn't hurt because certainly it does but Reggie appears to be well enough to stay in the game and that could ignite him trying to steal second base. It'll bring in a Rubio Durazo who has a hit and a walk tonight. Durazo with 12 home runs during the regular season. Five of them came off the bench as a pinch hitter. Now digs his way in with his sight set on that short right field porch. Big hole on the right side of the infield as well as they hold against Sanders at first. Tie game 1 1, top of the sixth inning. And Clemens steps off. Sanders, who hit 33 home runs during the regular season, also stole 14 bases. It was two for two in that department this postseason. Go ahead and run it first with two out. And a strike on the outside corner. Reggie Sanders holding gloves in his right hand. A, a lot of base runners do that. Because when they slide, the natural tendency is to open the fist. When you have something in it, you don't do that. He started and stopped, and that squirts out of the glove of Posada. And again, that glove is concerned of Posada, who smacks his fist into it now. 
He is not comfortable with that catcher's mitt. Looks like they have it fixed over on the bench. Yeah, it does. Steve Donahue, the assistant trainer. Sada knew that that glove was ready to go. I think so. He wishes, he would wish that somebody would run it out to him. Yep. Runner at first, two out, one ball, one strike. Clemens with 96 miles per hour is ahead of the count now, one and two. Looking for strikeout number eight. Runner goes. Picked a perfect pitch on which to run, and Sanders steals second base, and now a hit could give Arizona the lead. And that perfect pitch on which to run was a splitter in the dirt. New glove or no new glove, Posada wouldn't have thrown out Sanders. And that's part of the skill of stealing bases. Choose right, and Reggie did. So with a count of one and two, Sanders picked the right pitch. Durazo did not go after the pitch. Bouncing in there, and now a hit could give Arizona their first lead of this game. To the right side, diving stop Soriano from his knees. He kept it on the infield, keeps the game tied. The wide throw and a base hit for Durazo to put runners at the corners. Infielders are trained to play deeper with a run on at second base and two outs. Soriano did that part of the job well and this part of the job well. From his knees, off balance, an errant throw. And Durazo has a base hit, but the Yankees and Soriano save a run. Just into the edge of his glove is Durazo. Ends up safe at first. May have missed the bag the first time by and came back. It's a good observation, Joe. A, a runner going by the bag at first base doesn't come back that quickly unless he thought he missed it. Durazo with his attention on Soriano may have missed the bag. Great play by Soriano to come up with it. Understandably, an errant throw. He may have missed the bag. At any rate, it's first and third, two out. Matt Williams could put Arizona on top. He takes the ball. He did miss the bag. Step uh, drags his foot over it, but that was not uh, good enough for Durazo as he went back very rapidly to make sure. Williams had the bases loaded, one out in the fourth inning, hit a sack fly to right. He's one and one here against Roger Clemens with first and third, two out. Merrill Mendoza warming up here in the sixth inning. Clemens is only allowed one run on three hits. Williams lines one into left. Shane Spencer with a diving catch to end the inning. From the rocket, a rocket to left. And Shane Spencer making his first start in left field. Made the saving catch to keep it tied. Shane Spencer, who many around this Yankee team regard as the team's best 
left fielder made a diving catch to keep it 1 1 and Brian Anderson has been terrific catches the outside corner with strike one on Bernie Williams with Tino Martinez and Jorge Posada to follow the Yankees have scored two runs in 23 innings it's quickly 0 and 2 on Bernie Williams the Yankees came into this game hitting only 229 as a team in the entire postseason. And their offense has been shut down, and that includes tonight by the pitching of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Schilling, Johnson, now Brian Anderson. One ball, two strikes on Bernie Williams. Two and two. Mike Morgan and Troy Brohan getting loose for Arizona in their bullpen. Anderson approaching 100 pitches on the night. Williams into the hole at short. Romax throw. Too late. Base hit. Jane Spencer with a diving catch. Normally the Yankees credit their saves to Mariano Rivera, but it was Soriano who made the play at second base, and Shane Spencer, who saved temporarily the Diamondbacks taking the lead. Soriano before the Spencer play. So now a runner at first with nobody out. Tino Martinez at the plate. Throw to first. Martinez pops it straight up. These have been an adventure. Damian Miller, Mark Grace, they come together and it drops again. You can understand Mark Grace right here. Number one, who's calling for the ball? Nobody hears it. But Grace figuring that Miller has had such a problem coming in and now when Miller has the ball centered Mark knocks the ball out of the mitt. He actually hit the mitt before the ball did. Now the 0 1 to Tino Martinez is strike two. What is usually routine has become anything but for the Diamondbacks. It's an error on grace. There have been three misplays on pop ups. Two errors called on the misplays. The other error belongs to Tony Womack, the shortstop. How ironic that Bob Brenly, who got his first American League hit right here at this ballpark with the Toronto Blue Jays, talked about the landscaping behind home plate and the drop off once you leave that dirt area. It's like you're running downhill. Tino Martinez into right field. Reggie Sanders on the track. Williams tags but holds at first one out. Martinez got it off the end of the bat. The crowd got a rise out of that swing and we go back to the mistakes on these pop ups. Damian didn't touch that one. Fortunately for the Diamondbacks he didn't touch that one. And he and Grace touched that one. You can understand Mark Grace with Damian having having as tough a time as he's having Grace a four time gold glover coming in. I'm sure he tried to call Miller off the play. No way for Damian to to hear him on that. But once again Brian Anderson takes the heat off Miller. 
Now Posada. Check on Bernie Williams. In case you're wondering, stole 11 bases during the regular season. 0 for 2, trying to steal bases in the postseason. Up to 103 pitches for Brian Anderson. Anderson, who has not made a start since September 8th and hasn't won a start since July 22nd has given the Diamondbacks a terrific effort here tonight. I should say so. Pitching in and out of trouble caused by his teammates. Keeping a close eye on Bernie Williams and Lee Mazzilli has already lodged his complaint with that pickoff move by Brian Anderson. As Anderson is ready for his first pitch to Posada. Squirts away. Bernie Williams got a good jump down to second. Good base running by Williams. The minute that ball hit the dirt, Williams took off. With the Yankees offense as paltry as it is they have to take advantage of whatever mistakes they can a nice block by Miller but watch Bernie Williams at first step so important and a wild pitch on Brian Anderson. Go ahead run in scoring position with one out for New York down two games to none. To the Diamondbacks. 2 0 with Shane Spencer on deck and Mike Morgan, the right hander, ready in the bullpen for Arizona if needed. Bernie Williams at second, one out, and now 3 0 on Posada. If you're Bob Brindley, being back. Are down in the count, three and zero. Would you rather have Anderson pitching to Posada, or the right-hander Morgan pitching perhaps to David Justice, or maybe Joe Torre will leave the right-handed hitting Spencer in there? It is the weak link on the pitching staff for Arizona. The middle relief. We're in the sixth inning. Runner at second, one out. Posada walks, and it's two on, one out, and a decision to be made by the rookie manager Bob Brenlin. Again, do you leave Anderson in to face Spencer? Do you go to the right hander Morgan, who would face either Spencer or David Justice, would be an option for Joe Torrey? You can see Bob Welch talking to Brindley, suggesting things. Obviously, the decision is up to Brindley, and here he comes. Brindley has not made a call to the bullpen yet. 107 pitches on the night. Saw the graphic. His season high 110. He has had such a long layoff between starts that he will not get to throw his 108th pitch of the night. What a tremendous effort by Brian Anderson. But he is out of the game here in the sixth inning with two on and one out. That's exactly what happened. Morgan in the game, Justice at the plate, Justice pinch hitting for Shane Spencer with two on, one out. The 42 year old Mike Morgan. 20th year in the big leagues, major league service wise, and his numbers this postseason out of the Arizona bullpen, two on, one out. Quickly an 0-2 count on David Justice. I think what entered Bob Brindley's mind were two things. 38 degree chill factor makes it difficult to pinch hit. And by bringing in Justice you actually weaken the Yankee defense. With Spencer out of there. David Justice with a count of 0-2. Two. two on one out. Too far outside, ball one. 
Our question may be answered as to who's pitching for the Diamondbacks tomorrow night as a starter. Anderson upset, but Miguel Batista is up and throwing for the D-backs. Number 43. Even more reason to believe it's Schilling tomorrow night. The one-two pitch. Justice strikes out. Huge strikeout from Mike Morgan. And now Scott Brocious will walk to the plate as the Yankees send Justice up, and he didn't come close to that pitch. Pitch was off the plate. One of the cheerleaders, Brian Anderson. Those are his runs on base. Terrific job by Anderson, and a good job by Mike Morgan. Tonight's box score for the Yankees brought to you by John Hancock. Nobody with more than one hit tonight. Posada, the only RBI, it came on a home run leading off the second. The Yankees have stranded five. The Diamondbacks have made three errors, four misplays, and now it's two on with two out for Scott Brocious, who gets it off the end of the bat into left field. Base hit. And the score is Bernie Williams and the Yankees lead it two to one. For only the second time in the World Series, the Yankees take the lead. Off the end of the bat, broken bat by Brocious. Bernie Williams appeared to round third base thinking the ball was going to be caught before he steamed home. Let's hear it leave the bat. Broken bat base hit into left field. And now it's two on two out for Alfonso Soriano. Yankees lead two to one bottom of the sixth. The Yankees regaining the lead in the middle innings on a hit against the middle relief of the Arizona Diamondbacks with Mariano Rivera available for two innings tonight if needed. That means there's one inning now between this point in the game and Mariano Rivera's portion of the game and some scampering in the Yankee bullpen Joe Torre on the phone Romero Mendoza was throwing in the top of the sixth inning even though nobody's up somebody's preparing to get up that gets away the runners advance to second and third and this has been a long rough night for Damian Miller they go down as a wild pitch but Miller could not get down and keep that at the plate. Halloween has come a day early for Miller. Through the trap door. Wild pitch to move the runners up to second and third. Soriano. Womack to his left. Picks it up, as does Grace on the other end. A sloppy game for the Diamondbacks defensively. Brian Anderson did all he could. Morgan gets out of the inning, but not before the Yankees on that regain the lead. Two to one, New York, after six, back after this from your local Fox station. David Justice takes over in left field. Shane Spencer certainly made his presence felt with a diving catch to end the top of the sixth inning with two on, two out. Roger Clemens was appreciative of that effort as well as the effort by the second baseman Soriano on a ball hit by DeRazzo. The defense helped out Roger Clemens, and here in the seventh inning, Romero Mendoza getting loose, but Clemens will try to get through seven here tonight. Clemens approaching 100 pitches here in game three. Yankees saying that the hamstring is sound enough for for Clemens. If they work him here in game three he would be available then 
in game seven if needed as Mark Grace takes a strike over the outside corner. It'll be Grace Miller and then Womack. One ball, one strike. Prior to that pitch, Bernie Williams talking to David Justice, perhaps about the depth of Justice. Mark Grace does not have a lot of power the other way. Justice right now is too deep for Mark Grace. May not come into play, but it may. Two balls and a strike from Roger Clemens. You can see David Justice deep in left field. That's normally where you play a right-handed power hitter. Mark Grace, a line drive hitter the other way. Not a lot of power. Number 100 on the night from Clemens is up and out of the strike zone. Three balls and a strike. trying to get on to start this seventh inning pops it up shallow right center Bernie Williams a long run in one out it's a big out for Clemens falling behind Grace three and one coming back to get him with the eight and nine hitters coming up now Stanton joins Mendoza in the Yankee bullpen and again Joe Torre joking with us before the game saying he said to Mariano Rivera prior to tonight's game how come he didn't show up out in Arizona <laughs> right. acting like he wasn't even there he certainly was not needed the kind of pitching the Diamondbacks threw at the Yankees and the leads they had late in the game tonight though a different story The Yankees may be two defensive outs away from getting to Mariano Rivera. One ball, one strike. Yeah, if Clemens gets through this, then you'll see Mendoza and Stanton both sit down. And that's why he's loosening up right now. 23 career postseason saves for Mariano Rivera. One and two on Damian Miller. 18 of the 23 saves have been for four or more outs. One ball, two strikes on Damian Miller. Two out. Strikeout number eight for Roger Clemens. Pretty good combination right there. Speed and location. I tell you now the defense, the defense from the dugout, Willie Randolph just alerted Scott Brocious on the left side to play close to the line. The reason is Clemens is still throwing hard. Womack hits a lot of balls that way. A strike is the call, even though Posada did not keep it at the plate. 0 and 1 on Womack. Not only is Brocious near the line, but he's pulled in to guard against the bunt. Makes it doubly tough with a hitter like Womack. Martinez on the line at first. 0 and 2. Wicked splitter. Roger Clemens was brought to this team in February of 99 to be the stopper in the rotation. With the Yankees down two games to none, they turned to Roger Clemens. He strikes out Womack to end the seventh. He has struck out nine tonight, and the five time Cy Young Award winner has been the Rocket here this evening. Be a long, long time. 
A look at the night for Roger Clemens with the strikeouts. Nine of them tonight. Please remember Radio Shack is a collection site for the September 11 fund. Benefiting survivors, victims, families, and rescue personnel. The September 11 fund is a collaboration of United Ways, New York Community Trust, and the Council of Foundations. Leadoff hitter for the Yankees is their leadoff hitter in their lineup, Chuck Knobloch, with Jeter and O'Neill to follow. Bottom of the seventh, two to one, the Yankees on top. Mariano Rivera getting ready. Knobloch. Taking strike two. We started the night, Tim, talking about whether Roger Clemens looked comfortable or not. You and I had differing opinions. Roger Clemens was certainly comfortable enough to buzz through seven innings with one run on three hits allowed. And the only people looking uncomfortable as the game wore on were the Arizona hitters. He did, however, get some serious help from his defense with a diving stop by Soriano to his left to keep a ball on the infield. And a diving catch by Shane Spencer in left field with two on and two out to end the top of the sixth inning. On one and two, now block. It's a foul. As you saw the nine strikeouts, you realize that Roger Clement can reach that different level with pitches on different levels. Up down primarily not one strikeout tonight on a breaking ball fastball or splitter Knobloch hops out of there 0 for 3 tonight he's popped up twice and grounded out Knobloch slow roller tough play Womack good play Womack one out on the night for Clemens, Tim, 109 pitches, 23 first pitch strikes on 27 hitters. My goodness. Woo. You're right about those two defensive plays, obviously. Uh, the difference was that Soriano's play was equally important in that it stopped a run while Shane Spencer's play ended the inning. A lot of times when you don't end the inning, uh, it's thought as Posada has that new mitt he's working on. The old one is not ready. Shane Spencer through for the night. A lot of times when you don't end an inning on a good defensive play, people uh, don't give it the significance perhaps that it should be given. Jeter, one out of three tonight. A single his second time up, leading off the third inning. His only hit of this World Series, he's one out of ten. O'Neill on deck. The 1 0. 2 0. To the left side, high hop for Walmart. Throw good enough for the second out of the inning. Two up, two down in the bottom of the seventh. Our game summary is brought to you tonight by Pepsi. Brian Anderson gave the Diamondbacks all he could with five and a third innings. Two runs on five hits. Clemens, seven innings pitched, nine strikeouts. Matt Williams, a sack fly for the only Arizona run. Brocious, a go-ahead RBI single in the sixth inning. All of that after a leadoff home run by Posada back in the second. Mike Morgan will hand over the base last inning to put the Yankees on top. And now Greg Swindell misses down and away with Paul Juan to Paul O'Neill. You got to think uh, that this game has not seen the last of broken bats. Not with who's warming up for the Yankees in their bullpen, Mariano Rivera, who is the king of broken bats this year in the American League. Two out bases empty, one ball, no strikes. That caught the corner. One and one. One and 
and two. The Diamondbacks in the eighth inning will have the top of their lineup. Council, Finley, and Gonzalez. Their big bats will all hit again before the end of this game. Over but low, two and two. Greg Swindell, who broke in with Cleveland in 1986. 36 year old left hander over 15 years of major league service second appearance of this series and O'Neill sticks the bat out and gets a base hit to left but if you're Swindell with two outs you want O'Neill to put the ball in play on the left side of the infield reason for that. The home run is more remote to the left side. Paul O'Neill is just lifted for a pinch runner. Bellinger will come off the bench and run. So Bellinger is in the game and now really the two best corner outfielders for the Yankees Paul O'Neill and Shane Spencer have been lifted from this game. Bellinger a much better outfielder than David Justice at this point in David's career. Much more suitable to left field so we may see a switch with Justice moving to right. We'll see. Justice will stay in the lineup as Bernie Williams is at the plate and takes low for ball one. Paul O'Neill singled and stole a base back in the first inning. Lifted for the pinch runner in the seventh. On the inside corner, one and one. Joe Torre continually tells us in our meetings with him prior to these games that he expects six, seven innings out of Paul O'Neill. Problems with that stress fracture in his foot. Not totally healed, and probably the main reason why he is on the bench and Bellinger's running. On the outside corner, one and two. Williams has walked, grounded out, singled. Moved up on a wild pitch with good base running. Scored on a two out hit by Brocious as Bellinger draws a throw from Swindell. Sure, the Diamondbacks are thinking as poorly as they played on defense tonight, it could be a lot worse than just a two to one ball game. The Yankees on top by a run, bottom of the seventh, one on, two out. Miller tries to keep it near the plate. Can't keep it close enough, and Bellinger is at second with two out. Again, great base running by the Yankees. Bellinger off the minute the ball hit the dirt. Ball hits the dirt. Bellinger's gone. Go. You can see Paul O'Neill say go with two outs in particular. In the dirt, gone. Now Bernie Williams with a runner in scoring position two out two balls two strikes. A hit by O'Neill pinch runner was Bellinger moved to second on a wild pitch. Three balls, two strikes with Tino Martinez on deck. And because of that, I don't think Bernie Williams will get a strike to hit. Bob Brindley, sure that the veteran Swindell realizes first base is open. So they'll try to get Bernie Williams out, I feel, on balls out of the strike zone. Into right field. 
into the glove of Reggie Sanders to end the inning. A hit, a man left. The Yankees have left eight. We go to inning number eight. Two to one, New York. He said uh, Clay Bellinger in left field because left field is so spacious here at Yankee Stadium and Bellinger with the most speed. Council trying to put his way on Rivera. He's in for the first down of the inning. We talked about the Diamondbacks perhaps bunting on Roger Clemens. They waited too late. Nobody feels their position better than Mariano Rivera. And he proves it right here. Unassisted. Fine butt by Council. And a better play by Rivera. Oh, 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 oh. Caught him on the left hip. Rivera throws one pitch to get the first out of the top of the eighth inning. Good effort by Council. But a terrific play by Rivera. And now Steve Finley takes one inside. A 92 mile an hour cutter for ball one. Rivera 50 saves this season. Third highest total in AL history. And in the postseason, nobody has been better, including this year. A 1 0 record with an ERA under one, four saves. We mentioned earlier 23 career postseason saves. The 1 1. Two balls and a strike with Gonzalez, who hit 57 home runs during the regular season, waiting on deck. Left handers for the Diamondbacks will get the ball inside. What they'll try to do is hope it's around the knees. A high strike call to make it two and two. Not too many left handers hit this pitch effectively right below the letters. One out nobody on. And Finley got a piece to stay up there. The Diamondbacks have never seen a pitcher quite like Rivera. There's nobody in the National League that throws like Rivera. Nobody in the American League either. Two out. How about these numbers? As Gonzalez walks to the plate, lowest career postseason ERA. Rivera, Koufax. Christy Matthewson. Rivera at .74. With two out, nobody on the batter will be Gonzalez. Since this Yankee run began in 1996, the Yankees are 40 and one when leading after seven during the postseason. The one was game four of the 97 division series at Cleveland when Sandy Alomar hit an opposite field home run against Mariano Rivera. Two out nobody on no balls one strike on Gonzalez. No balls two strikes. Once again, Gonzalez looks for something down. One ball, two strikes on Luis Gonzalez. Posada setting up outside, just off the plate. Now the one, two.
five the clincher of the ALCS this Yankee team is averaging less than three runs a game through the entire postseason and that carries on through tonight they've hit three balls well three balls on the button tonight the home run by Posada the single to left field by Paul O'Neill and the other one was an out off the end of the bat and the end of the glove of Steve Finley Tino Martinez is hitless on the night Kurt Schilling we believed and we said it coming into the game would pinch tomorrow night no matter what if the Arizona Diamondbacks were up three games to none or up two games to one and this season following an Arizona loss including three postseason starts he is 16 and one and he was begging Bob Brentley before the start of this game to pitch tomorrow night seven innings in game one he allowed one run on three hits he told Bob Brenly early in the season this being Brenly's first year as the Diamondbacks manager I can tell the day after I start how I'm going to feel and how I'm going to pitch the next time I take the ball he said after that game one start he didn't feel anything after throwing 102 pitches he believes he is ready rested and ready to go Kurt told Bob that he could uh, pitch the next day if needed. Those are his numbers with normal rest. He has not been forced to work on short rest, three days rest yet. The 0 2 to Posada misses. And just so you know, since the beginning of the 99 playoffs, pitchers working on three days rest in the playoffs are 1 and 9 in 15 starts. But none of them have been Kurt Schilling. You're dealing with a different guy right there. One ball, two strikes. Two balls, two strikes. One out, nobody on. Posada is homer tonight, grounded out and walked. Yankees leading two to one, and Posada fouls it away. So with the series advantage no matter what happens tonight I know you have believed since really since game one of this World Series that Schilling should pitch game four. I don't care what the situation is up by three two games to one way I look at it. Say the Diamondbacks come back and win the game tonight then the Yankees would be down three games to nothing and against Rivera it's very difficult. But then you've got Schilling for two games and Randy Johnson for one. And here it is graphically. Starters on short rest, the postseason, 99 through this year, one and nine with an ERA of 9.73. Posada fouls it off to the right. talking about postseason pitchers there so you're talking about some of the better pitchers in the league year after year still you say you're not talking about somebody like Kurt Schilling not Kurt Schilling Randy Johnson yes I don't think Randy Johnson could come back on three days rest if Schilling goes and loses tomorrow night it won't be because of that lack of 24 hours more resting and pitching on Thursday. Three balls, two strikes. Posada in the air to right center. Finley going to get it. Two out. Two out here. Nobody on. And David Justice will take his swings against Greg Swindell. And Justice, to this point, has looked lost at the plate. He has the whole postseason. But getting back to Schilling, if you start him tomorrow night, as Bob Brindley, in my mind, will do, then you guarantee him to start game seven. That's as important as starting him tomorrow night. Justice pops it up left side. Brent plays with it. Williams. Oh, it's right back. Initially, he had no chance, and it ended up coming down right on top of somebody's head. One of the photographers 
down past the Diamondbacks dugout and they're asking I believe for the Diamondback trainer to come over there. Throwing a towel in so that's not a good sign as the game comes to a standstill. Just out of the reach of Matt Williams and. On to somebody in that photographer's well down the left side. Now an 0-2 count on David Justice. One ball, two strikes. Justice took over for Spencer in the bottom of the sixth after Spencer made a diving catch to keep it a tie game to end the top of the sixth. Justice struck out and is only at bat so far. Another pop up, and that is easily out of play. We talked about Chuck Knobloch earlier having so much to do with his hands. David Justice with that high kick and step and stride, he's doing too much with the lower part of his body. He is so vulnerable outside with that high leg kick. Too far outside. Two and two. Justice a check swing to stay up there. The Diamondbacks in the ninth inning will have Reggie Sanders, Rubio Durazo, and Matt Williams, Bob Brenly's crew, and they will take on Mariano Rivera, who picked up for Roger Clemens after seven strong innings. And the 39 year old right hand. Justice strikes out for the second time tonight, and we go to the ninth inning. Rivera will head back to work. Yankees down two games to none, lead it two to one. Mariano Rivera relieved in the eighth inning, got counsel on a bunt attempt, made a good play to get him, struck out Finley, struck out Gonzalez. This is an unbelievable stat that we've shown, I believe, one time before. Maybe. This postseason, the Yankees are 154 and one when leading after eight innings all time in their postseason history. And they lost game four of the 47 World Series. That is amazing. As Reggie Sanders goes after one up and out of the strike zone, strike one. It'll be Sanders, Durazo, and Matt Williams for Arizona down by a run up by two games in this World Series. It's even more amazing in the game four of the 1947 World Series. Bill Bevins had the no hitter with two out in the ninth inning and Cookie Lavagetto's double is how they beat the Yankees. Here's an 0 1 pitch. Sanders took strike two. Remember we talked about Roger Clemens earlier. They try to elevate on Reggie Sanders. A high strike there. The Yankees at the start of this run back in 96 lost the first two games here at home and went to Atlanta. Down two games to none. Joe Torre put the ball in the right hand of David Cohn, who pitched six innings. He and the Yankees turned that series around. They won game three and won four, five, and six to win it. Joe Torre has always talked about the importance of game three in any series, talking about a best of seven series. Obviously, in the best of five division series, he put the ball in the hand of Messina. But tonight he put it in the right hand of Roger Clemens and boy did he come up with arguably his most important outing as a Yankee. Here's a no two pitch. One ball two strikes. One thing to keep in mind Jorge Posada we mentioned earlier has 18 or had 18 pass balls this year. The pitcher that he has the most trouble with is Mariano Rivera. So Rivera is tough to hit. Tough to catch. 
One ball, two strikes. Sanders strikes out. Hitters know what's coming and can't catch up to it. When people don't take the offensive totals as seriously now in the postseason because of the extra chances, the extra rounds with the playoffs as opposed to how this game was played before 1969 or how it was played before 1995, now with the division series, as Durazo fouls it straight back. Well, you certainly have to look at the other side of it, and that is the pitching side of it, and all of the opportunities Rivera's had to have an off night. This is his 49th career postseason appearance, and his ERA right now is 0.73. One out, nobody on. Durazo, the time run at the plate, takes a ball. It's one and one. And Durazo with power to all fields. We showed you earlier the home run off Tommy Glavin to clinch it for the Diamondbacks in game five down in Atlanta. The one one. Durazo couldn't hold up. Strike two. One out, base is empty. And a foul into the seats, and there's a broken bat for the offseason woodpile that Mariano Rivera adds to during the course of the season. And now here is the temperature drops. Not only a broken bat, but stinging hands for Durazo. But but an idea about the style of Rivera. When you do hit it on the good part of the bat, that, that ball was just about the trademark. You pull it foul because of that inward darting movement to left-handed batters. In case you're wondering, Rivera allowed five home runs during the regular season as he piled up 50 saves. A one-two, two out. If he hits that ball well, he's going to pull it foul. The action about 10 feet from home plate is unbelievable. Talk to the hitters, and they all tell you. They end up swinging at what's not there. Williams, Matt Williams, a member of that 97 Cleveland Indians team that beat the Yankees. Bounced them out of the playoffs. The Yankees then came back to win in 98, 99. Last year, they trailed two games to none in the 2001 World Series. And it could very well be a matchup of Kurt Schilling and El Duque, Orlando Hernandez, tomorrow night in game four. Two to one is the score. Yankees up in the ninth inning with two out. Williams hits it down the left field line. Foul. As we talked about with a right field foul line in that pole. You can curl one down that left side. 318 feet away. Doesn't take much right down the left field line, but then it really juts out from there. Rivera has faced five Diamondback hitters, struck out four of them. A 1 1. One ball, two strikes. The Diamondbacks down to their final strike of the night. Two strikes. 
there's Posada looking at his glove after boxing that one and missed the strike zone. Yeah, that's the problem with Rivera. You can't center the fastball. You think it's there. You like the hitter. You think it's going to be in the pocket. It ends up on the heel. Ends up in the webbing. Now the 2-2 pitch. Time called at the plate. Called again as Williams gets out of there, and Rivera showed a little frustration. Now the 2 2 pitch. Full count with Mark Grace, the left handed hitting first baseman, waiting on deck. Good at bat by Matt Williams, laying off some very, very difficult pitches. Williams, the only RBI tonight for Arizona. Off that three run homer in the seventh inning of game two. 3 2 pitch. Got it down toward the end of the bat. Stays full. Matt Williams trying to extend it. Mariano Rivera trying to put the Yankees. On the board in this series. That'll get back and out of play, and the good at bat by Williams continues. Pitch of this at bat coming. Another 3 2 pitch. Cheater. Yankees win game three. with the game winning RBI and the Diamondbacks came here to Yankee Stadium played a sloppy game defensively got a tremendous effort out of Brian Anderson their 29 year old left hander Mike Morgan as you heard Bob Brenly say broke the bat of Scott Brocious who ended up floating a base hit into left field to put the Yankees on top for good and then after seven strong innings from Roger Clemens Mariano Rivera came in and did his usual work. Fairly stated, Joe, the Diamondbacks helping the Yankees out really more than the Yankees helped themselves out. As we said, the Yankees not swinging the bats worth a tap, but end up winning two to one. Two to one, the final. You could make the argument the most important start for Roger Clemens in his days as a Yankee. Bad hamstring at all, seven innings, one run, three hits, nine strikeouts. He got it to Mariano Rivera, and the Yankees win it 2-1. to one. They trail in the series 2-1. to one.